Hey everybody, Dr. Gary Thurry here. I want to talk about a hip flexor stretch. The reason why the hip flexor is so important is because we're sitting down all day. Not only are we sitting down all day, we're generally front dominant. So when people start doing squats, we end up bending forward, we end up using our thighs. If you've ever seen someone take the stairs, you'll see them sort of walking around, you know, walking up the stairs like this. Or you might find uh, that people when they, you know, go trekking or hiking, their thighs really hurt and the thighs are working hard and the glutes aren't. So what I found with a lot of runners and a lot of athletes is that if sometimes they've got hip pain or they've got back pain, it's because the hip flexors are really tight and they're not activating or not strengthening and using their glutes at the back which are more powerful, especially for hip extension or, or walking and running type movements that require this type of movement. So we need to release the tensioning through the front of the hip here first and we need to start to get this to be more flexible. So here's how you do it, there's a few different ways. The first way and the easiest way is to come down onto one knee, step your foot in front and step in quite a fair way because we want to shift the hip forward. The only way to stretch to the front of the hip is to keep our body straight here and then have our hip move forward compared to our leg. So this is all we need to do, stepping forward here, that's it, keeping the torso as vertical as possible here and then just pushing the butt forward so that the knee gets left behind and this is how you get a stretch here. Of course, one of the common mistakes I see people make is they end up arching their back. So when they say, oh, I've got to push this forward, they end up doing something like this. And if you're doing this, I'm feeling a little bit of strain here. So if you ever feel some back strain while you're doing this stretch, you're not doing it well because you haven't engaged your core. So instead of arching your back, what I'd suggest first is if you come back into a neutral position, and if you've ever done sort of pelvic tilts before, start looking at what pelvic tilts you need to do. So if you have, kind of like a, a Donald Duck butt or you know, like a J-Lo butt where it sticks out a little bit, that's fine. But what we need to do is start to engage our core and try and tuck the tailbone in underneath. And the more that we can tuck in, then we actually get our pelvis into either a neutral or even a slightly posterior or backward tilt. So if you're able to create this movement here, and have this control if you can't there'll be another video to teach you how to do that but if you're able to create this control when we come back to stretch we're going to open this and instead of arching our lower back and can you see that my hip is tilted forward we're going to just try and come and tilt backwards and then lean forward and the more i tilt and tuck my tailbone under the greater the stretch that i'm going to feel here and once you've got it here you can stay here and you can just breathe and hold for 20 30 seconds or even a minute an alternative is you take it all the way down into the stretch, hold it for a second, and just come back up. And you're just trying to improve the mobility. So every time you come forward, you're just trying to take it that little bit further, and then release. And then come forward again. Just take it that little bit further, and then release. And we do it that slow or that control. Now if you've done this and you go, okay, I've got a great stretch, I want more, there are two other things that you can do to do more. So the first thing is you're gonna stay into this same position, tuck the pelvis so the tailbone's coming under, and when you want more, hold onto your foot. So you can bend this knee and hold onto it here. Now you're gonna stretch not just the hip flexor, but the whole thigh all the way down in the quad muscle there. So this is a fantastic stretch. And again, try not to arch the back too much, really focus on tucking that tailbone, activating the core and the, the abdomen at the front here and pulling that right up and really contracting that. The other thing that you can do too is because the hip flexor does two things. It flexes the hip, it also helps the side bend in the body. So if I come in from a front view, same deal, we're gonna put the leg in front, stretching forward, tuck the tailbone in underneath, activate the core, get this hip pushed forward. I've got a nice stretch on my left hip flexor here. I'm gonna reach this hand up in the ceiling, maintaining all of this, of course, and then I'm gonna to lean to the side. And when I lean to the side, this is gonna to start to stretch the hip flexor, because the hip flexor does two things. It bends me this way, so if I go this way, I'm gonna get a greater stretch. And I might stay here for a minute or 30 seconds here, and remember to breathe, or I'm just gonna come out of it, neutral here. I'm gonna lean back in, reach, release, come back out. And every time I do this, I just try and take it just that tiny little bit deeper. And when you've got that and that feels really good, then of course you can do a hip flexor stretch standing up. And again, it's exactly the same thing. We just open our legs up, get into a lunge position, drop that back knee, try and drive that hip forward, back straight, and then reaching up. And over there. 
and you can do it that way as well. So try out these hip flexor stretches, see how they go. And especially because we're sitting a lot and we get very tight in here, we really need to start opening up our hips. So do that, see how that goes, let me know. And if you need some help with getting control of your stomach and your pelvic tilt, just watch out for the next video.